And hello from Auckland. And this is the final of the Buttercup Tri-Nation Series as Brad Fittler leads the Australians out onto Ericsson Stadium. Healthy sized crowd here for the decider. And let's have a look at this Australian lineup for tonight. Ian Smith in the centres. That's Darren Smith moving to centre. Matthew Johns, Brett Kamali to halves and the forwards. Fittler, Kosev, Fletcher, Jason Stevens in for Rodney Howe, Gower and Britt. The coach, of course, is Chris Anderson. And now over to the Kiwis. And it's Richie Barnett who leads them out for the fourth time in his short career as captain. This is their starting lineup tonight. Barnett at the back. Vanganar and Vanakolo the wings. Wiki and Talau the centres. Henry and Robbie Paul the halves and the forwards. Swan, Kearney, Rua, Smith, Swain and Vanganar. That's Joe in the front row. And Frank Endicott the coach. Russell Smith, the Englishman in charge. We are underway. The decider. And fielded by Brian Fletcher from the kickoff. And Matt Rua is in over the top with Richard Swain. I'm sure we're going to get going to get a fight up opening from the Kiwis. Jason Smith or Stevens it is rather who gets his first touch. Rodney Howe, what a minor problem for Rodney, quite serious in fact. He's due to undergo ankle surgery and also a problem with his knee. And stand by if New Zealand do lead at half time for an Australian comeback. Right at the moment it's Wayne who will play it, 45 metres out from the Australian line and to the left they come with Kearney. Devastating first half in the opening match. And it was that sort of ball that forced that. Rogers has got an intercept here. He's 50 metres to the try line. The chase is coming. They won't get him. Matt Rogers scores an intercept try for the Australians. They're off to a flyer. Over the top, not touched by Kamali. Matt Rogers, I think that's okay. I don't think he got a touch as the ball was going down. Although the crowd disagree. We'll have a look at another angle here. No, nah, that's as good as gold. That'll be the first try of this game, the first points. Kiwis are coming back as if it is no try, but there's the green light. The season in the NRL finished. Disappointingly with the Sharks. But tonight he starts off with six points. Intercept try to start things. Six nil to the Aussies over the Kiwis. And the Kiwi 40 middle line. Gano a little slow to get to his feet. Kamali. Kicks back across field. I thought Darren Smith may have been offside. Barnett, no troubles for him. Darren Smith didn't come inside the 10 metres. And Britt makes the tackle on Barnett. He's had a flawless series, really. The captain for New Zealand, Richie Barnett. Nicolo getting the Kiwis out of trouble. It is a, a strong back line. Tanner on Wiki in the centres. Nigel Vanganar and Vanicolo on the wings. And Paul has sent his brother away, Robbie. And lock your chases, it'll be in vain. Robbie Paul scores. Well, how good are these two? Henry and Robbie Paul. Oh, we'd like to see them in the NRL, these two, on a weekly basis. They are marvellous players. Every time we see them go around at the international level, you are more impressed. On his left-hand side, a little step, also a fend. In fact, he's taken out about four Australian defenders in the one movement. A brave chase here from Darren Lockyer from behind. But it was to no avail, and the Kiwis hit back very strongly. Great run here from the 5-8. Yeah, it was a great run there by Henry Paul. He's been playing hooker throughout the series and only got moved to 5-8 when Stacey Jones broke his arm and he finds his brother in support, Robbie, and he's just too quick and scores under the post. It's Henry who's under contract with Bradford until the end of 2001, but Robbie comes up at the end of next season. And they're now 28 metres out. Swain. To the right with Henry Paul. And there is Rua. Melbourne Storm combination in the second row for New Zealand. Rua and Kearney, both coming off excellent season. Smith. The St. George Illawarra Dragon in this test match tonight. Receiver. Robbie at second. A dummy to Kearney. Robbie Paul is there again. He may have come up short. Robbie Paul weaving and stepping. Well, that's going to be very interesting. I think he's handled very well, the try scorer. I think momentum takes it over. And he could have been guilty very easily of a double movement. Well, how smart was that? Robbie Paul 
It looks like it's touched the line. Most players would have went the double bounce. Well, they're going to say he's lost the ball. Oh, gee. Because he's taken his arm off the torso, but against the Great Britain team in Brisbane a fortnight ago, 42 to 6 was the scoreline then. And Matt Rogers runs away from Robbie Paul, then gets away from another Matt Rogers. Here's trouble. He's five metres out. And to ground he goes. Vandenau was the last man. Kamali inside for Vela. And Vela bumping run into Kearney. The call is to go to the left. They're fanned out. And Kamali across with Vettler. And long pass. Darren Smith steps inside away from Tallow and Lockyer. Here comes an Australian tie to Matthew Johns. No doubt about it, there's some protesting from the Kiwis. But they worked it beautifully, the green and gold. It was set up by this wonderful run from Matt Rogers. Beat Robbie Paul, spun out a couple more tackles, took it to five metres out. Vela followed up with a fine charge. And then Laurie, the Australian back line, did the rest with a little bit of luck out wide, I suppose. Yeah, that's right. You see Wagner there come in. He took the wrong man. Smith ended up with the ball. He got it off to Lockyer. And Lockyer just passes to Matthew Johns. But they always looked like they had numbers on the Kiwi side. Let's just have a look out wide here to see if the New Zealanders do touch it. Darren Smith props back inside. May have got a little touch there from the New Zealanders, but it did go backwards anyway to Lockyer. Matty Johns gets a try. Australian celebrate. Disbelief on the face of Jason Lowry right at the finish. Matt Rogers bangs another two over. Tri-Nations final, and the Australians lead by 12 points to six. It's been a bright start to this test match. Possession fairly evenly shared. New Zealand is 48. Australians with 52%. Only three penalties awarded. And already we have three tries on the board. Well, that's the ball at the finish there. Rogers kicked. Beautiful off the boot. And there's another two. I'd like to keep that average up over the next five or six years. Now Darren Britt taken sideways there by Vangana. The Australian props having the better of the the New Zealand front men tonight. As now the Australians lose it. And the player who lost it is still on the deck. And New Zealand come back with it. Vanicolo. It was Matthew Johns who lost the ball. And he's fairly groggy as well, Matthew Johns. As Robbie Paul gets inside the 40. It was again. Oh, Joe Vangana. That was forward, wasn't it? Oh, that was just con I thought it was conceded by Joe Vangana. He pulled up and he received the ball. And away goes Wiki. Ruben struggling his way through, and he's got a few things to say to the referee on the way as well. That's yeah, we've a good performance. We've got a high tackle here. The Australians will be penalised. I think it was Gidley. No, in fact, it's Ryan Girdler. Laurie Daly caught, it, caught him this. A, look at him. Wiki is carrying Wendell Saylor, and all the way he's talking to referee Russell Smith. Well, he's certainly one of the strongest ball runners out there tonight, and I think that's what the Kiwis need more of. Up they come. Smith taken high there by Darren Smith. No relation. Swain. Chant of Kiwis up here at Ericsson Stadium. Vangana. Five metres out. Offloading for Swain. It almost bubbled out of the hands. Gower there in defence. And now Henry Paul. Craig Smith gets another hit up. Only three metres out. Matthew Johns is ready to come back. He watches his teammates defend the line right now. Henry Paul steps off the right, gets it over, but Lockyer has saved it in goal. Now, does Darren Lockyer steal the football here to give a penalty away? And if so, is it a penalty try? Well, no, I don't think you can say for certain that he was going to score. I'm prepared to say Henry Paul just puts it down into Darren Lockyer's hands. But I didn't know about Russell Smith just saying, shut up to the player. No. Laurie sort of sat up, his ears went up when he heard that. <laughs> they must learn good tricks, these Paul brothers over in England, because I thought exactly what you called there. I thought that Henry Paul just placed it in Lockyer's arms. Well, I think he loses it. I think it'll just be play on with... No, no, it's back to call. Well, what, what was inconclusive about that on the video for? Hang on, he's got, he's got Lockyer in the bin for 10 minutes for stealing the football. 
in a try scoring situation so it's basically a professional foul and a great chance here for New Zealand they will be up against 12 men almost up until half time and they come back with Barnett he's 10 metres out you think back to two weeks ago Australia put two tries on the Great Britain side when Dennis Betts was in the sin bin here's another penalty it's against Fletcher It'll lead up a few seconds. I'd be surprised though if they go for goal at 14-6. That's the way they're hitting at the moment. From 19 metres out and 12 in from touch. To reduce the margin to six, Henry Paul's kick is on song. So six points is the margin, 14 points to eight. And Rogers. Passing for Jason Stevens. With us at the start of the coverage, Stevens coming into the side for an injured Rodney Howe. Now, Wendell Saylor gets a rare touch tonight. Wrapped up 35 metres out from the New Zealand line. I expect Wendell to do some damage as this New Zealand defence tyres. Kamali with a dummy and able to stand in the tackle. And Matt Rogers is with it. He's 25 metres out, Matt Rogers. And gets away from Vungana. And still going. Well, Matt Rogers has kept it alive with Matthew Johns, then for Gidley. Ten metres out, and Gidley has taken the ground and over the sideline. Great rugby league from both teams. Exciting stuff here. The responsibility of taking the quick tap. Robbie Paul now trying to find support. Ducks into the tackle. Three left, 15 out. Final 60 seconds of this first half. Tri-Nations final. Richard Swain, the dummy half run has caught them offside and they're pointing at the post already. Brad Fittler has been called out. If you want to have a look at it, he's still up, this please, he's To complete the first half from Henry Paul. He's made it three from three off his boot. <laughs> Robbie Paul, the man who scored the try for the Kiwis. But the Australians go to the break in this Bartercard Tri-Nation Series final. 14 points to 10, good half of football. And we will take a break. This Australian women's cricket team have been leading the way. Pakistan still looking for their first ever victory over Australia. They are by far the best side. Let's hit it. Oh, sweet. Oh, dear, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fortunate. Wake me up before you go, go. <laughs> we were out and these ladies asked who the older brother was. Man, he's five years older. Hey bro. He had more hair than me then. Make today your turning point and the doctors at Ashley and Martin could help regrow your hair. There's fast. Then there's the fastest. Optus 5G, Australia's fastest 5G. It starts with yes. It's the new Nerf Elite 2.0 Moto Blitz. Unleash the play in you. Look for the official Nerf logo. It's Nerf or nothing. Skill. It's easy to see if you know where to look. Steel Blue. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a good time. Go. Looks like paradise, eh? Hotel Portofino begins February 12 on Fox Showcase or watch on demand. Hey, you. It's that time of year again. Football, baby. When it's okay to get a little carried away for football. Why? Because this is playoff season. Ready then for the second half. It certainly wasn't the perfect 40 minutes of football, the first half, but certainly all the, the trans-Tasman rivalry was there. The fans didn't get it at the Rugby World Cup, but they've got it tonight. Australia versus New Zealand. And a keen battle. The final 40 minutes as Vanganar carries back. And first tackle of the second half from Nick Kosef was front on a start to this 
second 40 minutes, so vital for the home team. They conceded an intercept try in the first 10 minutes of the first half. But they must not let these Australians get too far in front. It was Girdler on the first. And now Jason Smith tries to bulldog his way over. Kalis is low in the tackle. Over the top was Swain. And Girdler at dummy half. Matthew Johns, still no Kamali out there. Matthew Johns gets within two or three. Lowry was able to ride him to ground. They come to the left and losing the ball. It was Wiki who came off the line. It's play on for the Australians. Fourth tackle. So no restart of the tackle count for the Australians. Jason Smith trying to back over. This could be another scrum for held up. Wendell Saylor was. And with Wiki's tackle. He hasn't ruled a lost ball against the Australians and he hasn't ruled that New Zealand touched it. Well, this is going to take a great effort from New Zealand to hold out. That's Ruben Wiki coming up and smashing Ryan Girdler. It was ruled to be the fourth tackle. And at the end of it, Jason Smith held up exactly the same way that Wendell Saylor was only moments ago. We start again from the scrum for the Australians. Lock your passes for Gidley, then for Rogers. That's a tie for mine to Matt Rogers. A superb finisher, Matt Rogers. And in the blink of the eye, the Australians for mine have scored. The video referee will check it though. Yep. And then and it could be a decisive try in the context of this match. No trouble for mine from Matt Rogers. Laurie Daly. Yeah, well, that's a try. Great work there by Matt Rogers. Did a great in and away on Vaynercolo. There goes the green light. Try. Aren't they a support win here? Wendell Salem, Matt Rogers. Great runners of broken play. Amazing strength. Not much of Matt Rogers, but the way that he can spin out of tackles, beat tackles, and then take advantage of his pace. They just get on the outside. Darren Lockie did very well to go in and away. Gidley realised that he had to get the ball as quickly as he could to Matt Rogers, and they gave the flying Canola winger just enough space to cross out wide. Yeah, you could see the confusion in the Kiwi defence. Some guys were sliding out, other guys were coming in. There obviously was no talk, and as you can see here, you see him going across, Henry Paul, Talao went to come in, left Gidley unmarked, offloads to Rogers, who's got too much pace for Vaynercolo to go over in the corner. Good delivery there from Gidley. And this man on screen, now with 14 points for the night. And he's looking for another two here, right from the sideline. His first try tonight came from him, an intercept. And Rogers' kick in flight off the upright. The Kiwis are still in it. 18-10, the final of the Tri-Nations. In Australia, that's something that they didn't need then. They needed just to get a kick away and consolidate their lead. The 17 of David Kidd will packed into that previous scrum. And they come left, Kalis. Taken front on by Vela. And you wouldn't know their Eels teammates. They're having a real fight there, 15 metres out. And Vela is penalised, and I think Kalis has given him a gobful. Right in front of the Australian posts. The difference at the moment is eight. There's no choice to make here. They must kick the goal to take them. They'll convert a try from the lead. And Henry Paul should have a few problems with this. And that's good to see to the extent that it shows what it means. They might be teammates back in the NRL competition, but no love lost when they don their respective national jerseys. And Henry Paul has been all perfect with a boot tonight. The Kiwis have only scored the one try. And Robbie Paul. So they're in search of this try. I suppose we do have to cogitate what could happen if it was a drawn result at full time. They would play 10 minutes each way and then after that, the first scorer wins in sudden death extra time. In the meantime, the Kiwis are looking for that try. Barnett tackled 10 metres out. Now Robbie Paul kicks. It's put down there by Girdler. Still on and Locker just bats it over the dead ball line. And Logan Swan says, oh gosh, I missed. Get away, get away. What's that? Get away. Right. Plenty of arguing there amongst the Australian players. Wendell Saylor perhaps saying he was held out of it. Well, Logan Swan, he is livid that he didn't get to the the ball to score here 
Look, Lozado again, have a little bit of luck with this kick. Coming off Ryan Girdler. Kicked through by Logan Swan. He just couldn't get past Darren Lockyer, who did a wonderful job to get his right hand out to bat the ball over the dead ball line. Laurie, I didn't think too much of the interference there from Logan Swan. It was a fair contest going for the ball with Lockyer. And wrapped up in the tackle there of Britt. And over the top was Fletcher. It's been a good second half, this one. Kearney, he's 20 metres out. Fittler made the tackle, and Kearney looking for the quick play, the ball. And Fittler is penalised. Penalised that time. Kearney planted the ball on the ground. And you can see right on the 20 metre line. And is it another two? It is for Henry Paul. It's now four the difference. 18-14. Sideways there by Smith. The crowd is lively. Vangana, Henry Paul, Robbie Paul. 15 metres out inside. Joe Vangana juggles. And tackle 10 metres out. Britt will be penalised here. And he's off to the sin bin. Darren Britt is off to the sin bin. Well, he's issued plenty of cautions. Yeah, look, I, I think he's the victim of circumstance here, Darren Britt. I don't think he physically had time to let go of the man about to play the football. Yeah, you're right, Peter. The rule book says you can't just plant the ball on the ground and leave it yourself off it. You must get to your feet, then place it to play it. 18-14. They're all on notice. Make it 18-16. 30 out from their own line. They trail by two. Craig Smith. And Richard Swain prepares to come back. He's done the half running. He's been very strong tonight. Just short of halfway now. Henry Paul. Matt Ruer is taken a little high by Jason Smith. It was a lazy tackle. He will be penalised. Well, I didn't think there was much in that. I thought he got him around the shoulders. I think that the crowd has given the Kiwis that penalty. 13-7 yep. the count. The Kiwis are about to go on the attack deep inside green and gold territory. In fact, the kick finds the line on the 20. That's the tackle on Rua from Smith. And here they come, Joe Bungana. 15 out and passing. Away goes Nigel Bungana. Nigel Vangana has scored for the Kiwis. Cousin to cousin. And they are in front for the first time tonight. Well, I'm not even going to try and say it's a Vangana thon because it's almost impossible. Great ball hit from Joe Vangana. He just took the whole Australian defensive line by surprise. You can see there, Darren Smith is actually defending on the wing. Sailor is inside him. They've tried to put the big hit on Vangana. He's offloaded to his cousin who's gone over in the corner. The Kiwis are celebrating, but there's still 10 minutes to go in this game. I wouldn't write the Australians off. Doesn't, all, doesn't it all go well for New Zealand Test Rugby League having such young players doing so well? Nigel would have run to the South Island if he had to to score. Henry Paul, can he keep it perfect for the night? He's hit the post. His first miss. And now it's two points the advantage of New Zealand. 20 points to 18. Here's the kick of Henry Paul swinging away and then right at the last moment started to straighten up. We'll be back in two and a half minutes, so for the last four minutes the Australians will have the full complement as Matt Rogers taken by Willie Talao. Just inside the 40 metre zone. Some heavy defence. Crowd is lifting. I don't think they haven't made a difference tonight for the Kiwis. They've kept things very upbeat. Lockyer. Wrapped up short of halfway. Now Rogers is limping. More troubles for the green and goal. As Timmons is taken 45 metres out from the New Zealand line. It seems to be bad news right across the park at the moment. Kamali. He is through. 20 metres out. Back it comes for Fittler. And able to pass. Matthew Johns. Then for Sailor. Sailor will score. Sailor has scored for the Australians. And they are back in front. Oh. And there's six remaining. What a great try. The crowd is stunned here at Ericsson Stadium. The rain has started to fall, but the Australians, have they pulled it out of the bag with a great try. Brett Kamali. We didn't think we'd see him again for this last 20, 30 minutes. He's got a badly bruised hip. He slides through. He finds Brad Fittler with a flick pass. 
Fittler holds off the defence. Matthew Johns looks for Wendell Saylor, and Big Wendell crosses out wide. Well, when you're doing a tough still, you look to your champion players, and there goes Kamali straight through. Finds another one here with a great pass in Fittler. Fittler backs it up to Matthew Johns, and Matthew Johns gives it to Wendell Saylor. Four of the big guns in the Australian team combined to put Australia in front. And we saw from the head-on replay right then, Matthew Johns delivering that final pass. He held it right up, committed the fullback. And Wendell Saylor scores. 22-20. Rogers kick. It's swinging around. It's across the face from Matt Rogers. Two-point ball game. And 22 points to 20. So the Kiwis, 30 metres out from the line. Closing seconds of this decider and Kalis has tackled. Five seconds. And now they come to the right. Henry Paul, he tries the high ball. It's Lockyer, and Lockyer has lost it. Logan Swan comes through for the Kiwis. A pile up on the goal line. New Zealand has lost it in both senses. They have lost the ball. Although he may go to the video referee, I don't know who's claiming a try. There's no one there for New Zealand who is. No, it's the Australians who are doing the celebrating. They realise that they've won it. The Kiwis, they also realise that they weren't able to get the football Let's see if there's any offside. It will be relevant. So we'll go the full sequence, guys. I'm just a little bit perplexed here. I mean, you can't go for the video referee if there's no one who's even come within cooey of scoring. Let's see it. There were plenty of players there. I don't know whether that angle's going to help them a whole lot. Oh, gee, there's four Australians there. There's one Kiwi jumper at the bottom of it. Well, I saw a New Zealand knock-on leading up to that anyway. Kick goes up from Paul. Chase. Sees Lockyer spill it. Logan Swan swoops. Look, if he scored, surely Matt Rule would go up. He had the best side of anyone. And all he did is go for the loose ball. I mean, there's no reaction there from the Kiwis at all. Well, you can't really tell from that angle. And by the way the referee is standing, if it goes back to a referee's call, he does not look like he's going to award a try. Well, there's the ball nowhere over the line. I, I can't believe it. We have this conjecture. The game is over. Oh, yeah, if you've got a ticket on the Australians, get in the queue right now. We'll just stand by to make it official. It's no try. It is all over. Completion to the Bartercard Tri Nation Series. And the end of a sad week for New Zealand sport. But Australia, well, they can hold their heads high. They have come through this Tri Nation Series, they lost the opening match. And tonight they have fought back and they have won by 22 points to 20. So they maintain this incredible record of series wins over the Kiwis. The two countries clashed three times this year. And you will look at the result, 2-1 to the Australians. And that full-time scoreline, 22 points to 20.